हरे कृष्णा टेक पायनियर एंड इंडस्ट्रियलिस्ट नारायण मूर्ति हैज रिकमेंडेड दैट इंडियंस वर्क सेवेंटी आवर्स अ वीक स्पेशली इंडियन यूथ सो दैट दे कैन हेल्प इंडिया प्रोग्रेस एंड बिकम एट द टॉप ऑफ द इकोनॉमिक सुपर पावर्स इन द वर्ल्ड इन द नियर फ्यूचर वॉट वुड बी द भगवीता परस्पेक्टिव ऑन दिस रिकमेंडेशन I'll talk about the Bhagavata perspective in three terms. What does what is the role of productivity? What is the meaning of personhood? And then what is the role of profession? Productivity, especially in terms of economic productivity, has been defined as the sole parameter, if not at least the primary parameter. of national progress and economic growth in most parts of the world however we humans are much more than producing and consuming machines after the industrial revolution when work became highly mechanized and stripped of much of individuality people were reduced to their operating organs a ship captain would say i want all the hands on the deck so factory factory workers were reduced to their functioning limbs so this idea that we humans are to be defined solely by how much we produce is a very dehumanizing idea humans are multifaceted and when we think of progress only in terms of financial productivity what is the result japan is probably the example of the most success in rising from ruins at the end of the second world war to becoming one of the leading economic powers in the world in just 6 7 decades but at what social cost japan has among the highest suicide rates an extremely high depression rate and workaholism is a serious problem in today's world where people define themselves entirely by their work and everything else becomes not only subordinated to their work but everything becomes sidelined and even rejected in the unidimensional almost manic pursuit of work just as alcoholism becomes a drug of escape for some people workaholism can also become the drug of escape for people now i'll talk later when we talk about the role of profession how hard work does not have to be done as a escape way but the point is especially in today's world where people are already becoming lonely and fragmented due to families breaking apart and people living away from the communities that they belong to due to job requirements and upward mobility if there is a pressure for working even harder than usual then that will lead to far greater mental health problems that can lead to far greater family fragmentation and as japan is now increasingly facing a steep downward slide of depopulation where japanese people are just not beginning children and the government is seriously considering providing support financially for young japanese people to ha- have children and yet they find it very difficult because of the way their whole life has been oriented so this unidimensional pursuit of one thing in life both from a contemporary statistical and sociological perspective is damaging any work above 55 hours is likely to 50 hours per works per week is statistically been shown to cause more harm to the body and more eventual deaths than even malaria so and then from the vedic perspective there are four purusharthas dharma artha kama and moksha so productivity can be said to be one part of artha dharma is not just religion it is the ethical foundation of kindness of discipline of diligence which is essential for every living being and artha is not just money but it is resources and opportunities that help a person grow in life 
then kama is not just sexual desire it is the satisfaction of desires which comes through having resources and opportunities and using them properly to have meaningful relationships with one's life partner with the children that one's begets and then finally comes moksha which is freedom freedom from the desires and cravings that bind us to things that are ultimately neither fulfilling nor worthwhile so this all four are important for a fulfilling human life and reducing these four purusharthas to only one that is artha with artha also being reduced to a small definition in terms of how many hours people are working is a very dangerously reductionistic vision of what productivity is productivity should be generating resources for a fulfilling life and for a prosperous society not just the number of hours that a person is working then the second part is this vision of productivity reductionistic vision of humans simply as producing and consuming machines comes from a erroneous notion of personhood we as human beings have a three level existence body mind and soul as the bhagavad gita explains and each one of these aspects of our being needs nourishment if only our body is nourished then a, a person may be physically well fed but if they have no fulfilling relationships if they have no scope for relaxation if they have no ultimate meaning and purpose in life then other dimensions of their being are lost and this is what we are seeing increasingly in western society where people have physical com- comforts and mental misery they are comfortably miserable is that the path we want to go every aspect of human being need to be nourished and work is meant to nourish provide us resources for nourishing our body and to create a well organized and prada- prosperous society that helps nourish everybody member of the society so karma sang- loka sangraha is through karma maintaining the society and the world through one's responsible duty is recommended in the bhagavad gita but this loka sangraha is not just physical maintenance we need relationships we need spiritual meaning and purpose for our life and unless all aspects of our personality personhood are nourished we will remain discontented and that brings us to the last part profession the bhagavad gita talks about profession in terms of varna and it explains that the ideal situation is where people have work that is aligned with their psychophysical nature that they have natural interest and competence in and therefore they will be naturally highly efficient and effective in that work so the bhagavad gita and the broader vedic ethos is certainly not against hard work arjuna himself who is a student of the bhagavad gita was a champion archer and he didn't become like that by being lazy that he was so diligent in his work that he is known as gudakesha that name comes both from his material side and his spiritual side from his material side he was so dedicated to the study of archery that he studied all day from his teacher dronacharya and late into the night he would practice archery so that he would become expert in whatever was taught and that gudakesha also comes from his devotion to krishna by which he was able to conquer the debilitating influences of ignorant in, ignorance inducing activities like oversleeping so the point is that arjuna was no shirker from hard work but the key point is not everybody in today's world can find work that is aligned with their nature many times people say that if you enjoy what you do then all your work will seem like enjoyment to you well there is definitely truth to that if one is having material harmony in terms of their work being aligned with their nature so instead of simply telling people to work harder and harder we need to encourage and equip people to become more self aware so that they can better understand themselves understand their god given talents and interests 
and then have the courage to engage in occupations that are in, that are in alignment with their natures and this requires not just working harder but thinking deeper that thinking deeper is done by studying wisdom texts like the bhagavad gita by adopting spiritual practices like mantra meditation by giving quality time for being with oneself for cultivating self awareness by which we can understand how we are gifted and how we can contribute when people are aligned more and more with their natures then they won't find work to be such a drag and then even if they don't work 70 hours whatever time they work they will be able to be much more fulfilled and productive in the time that they engage themselves in and every individual depending on the stage and time in their life may decide different boundaries of how much they want to work if somebody is inspired and impassioned in passion enough to work 60 70 hours or maybe even more there's no stopping them from that but every choice brings with it a compromise that much dedication to work will mean that they won't have time for other things in their life and if that is the price they are willing to pay then it's their life and it's their choice but this should be an informed intentional choice based on an understanding of who they are and how they feel they can contribute the best but when it becomes a social pressure and especially it becomes a mandate either from the companies or from the state then through such work people will not find themselves people will lose themselves and people who are lost from themselves create a lost society where even if there is economic prosperity there is inner poverty and that is not the contribution that india is meant to make to the world if india is really to be powerful on the global stage india's contribution has to be holistic that india is rising up materially financially geopolitically is great but india's great wealth is its spiritual heritage and as young indians become more and more encouraged and equipped to dive into its spiritual wisdom and empower themselves with it then indians can demonstrate all round holistic prosperity physically mentally and spiritually and that is what could be the distinctive contribution of india to the world thank you